Welcome back. So it's Saturday night. Happy New Year to everybody because by the time this goes live, it's going to be New Year for almost the entire globe. Um, minus Hawaii, of course, and depending on when this is done processing, the west coast of North America as well. But it is time for the power rankings. We're back to the puck board this week. So don't worry, the Christmas tree is once a year. I knew people would complain. That's why I did the board at the end. People still complain. All right which is kind of giving people what they want just at the end, just summarize, boom. All right, so number 32 this week, we'll just jump right on ahead. And where do the Chicago Blackhawks finish 2022? Uh, they finish at 32. So for the Chicago Blackhawks, they drop one spot. It really was a matter of the game between Columbus and Chicago being the, the game for 32nd slash 31st place. Uh, it, it really is, it's that simple. So 31st and not really a spoiler, is Columbus moving up to 31st. Uh, Columbus, of course, dealing with a lot of injuries. Chicago is rebuilding. So what Chicago is doing is on purpose. What Columbus is doing is just, it, it's a disaster so far this year. They broke their seven-game losing streak, all seven in regulation, with the win over Chicago today. And we'll see whether or not they can get something going from that. But they're done with Chicago, so we won't see any more meetings between them. They go one and one against each other. So unless they meet in the Stanley Cup final, that's not likely, is it? All right, so number 31, Columbus. Number 32, Chicago. We're all set. We can move on. All right, number 30, same spot as last week, the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, for the Ducks, there's been some encouraging results lately, and honestly, they've been showing a bit more fight in recent weeks than they had in the weeks prior to that. Uh, they're no longer last on the board, but they're not winning often enough to move up either. So uh, I have them at 30th. Although that being said, there is a team that may very well fall beneath them. There's two that could actually fall beneath them before, I would say, two weeks from now. I could see if Anaheim keeps playing the way they are. And there's there's definitely that fight there. Uh, Adam Henry playing really well for them right now as an example. But yeah, I could see them moving up just because there's a couple teams that are really having a hard time when it comes to winning. And so, yeah, uh, that's going to change the complexion of the board. But the teams that were expected to be at the bottom are starting to fall to the bottom. Uh, number 29 is an example of that, dropping one spot from where they were last week, the San Jose Sharks. So, yeah, see, there you go. Another another of the reverse retro pucks. Uh, I had to get Sharks because you kind of have to get Sharks, don't you? Is It's a Seals puck. It's a Seals look. And it makes sense they're doing a Seals throwback because... The California Seals were known for a couple of things, and not for winning. Uh, but they, they did have a number one draft pick that they traded and became Guy Lafleur. So if San Jose gets the number one draft pick, don't trade it to Montreal. Uh, Montreal may end up getting it by themselves. They may get it legit. But uh, yeah, for for the Sharks, uh, this, this has been a really rough year. Uh, the game in Dallas is a good example. They had good moments during that game. They had moments where it looked really good. And then it would just fall apart. So for San Jose, there's some reason to think you don't have to throw the whole team out necessarily, but they're they're not a playoff team at any by any stretch. All right, number 28, uh, dropping two spots from last week, Montreal. Uh, for the Habs, this this season is just absolutely turned on its ear. Uh, this road trip that they went through this week, um, and of course it it extended over the Christmas break. Not great. Uh, it's it's a road trip that really has taken them out. I can't wait till Vancouver follows a similar route uh, through these these locations. But at any rate, uh, for Montreal, yeah. Uh, if there was any thought that maybe they'd stay in the race, I think that's been vanquished. They're now four games below NHL 500. And in the East, you just can't be. You can't be that far back. You can't be that far under. And you can see the frustration with Marty St. Louis, too. And I feel bad for him because I think he's a good coach. I think he's done a good job with Caulfield. Caulfield could score 40 goals this year. That, to me, is a success. And he kept them in the hunt for longer than anybody expected. So hopefully San Luis doesn't get too frustrated and realizes it's a process, it's not always a lot of fun, and he's doing a good job. And for Montreal, it's been a rough week this week for them. So they're down to 28. Uh, number 27, moving up two spots from last week, the surprising Philadelphia Flyers. Um, going through California, they get the win over San Jose, and then they get the win over L.A. today. And so, yeah, we'll see if if there's some upward momentum here. One thing with them being coached by John Tortorella and the systems he's putting in place, he is getting more wins out of them than I think another coach would. 
So for Philadelphia, yeah, they end up moving up in part because Montreal had such a miserable week, in part because San Jose didn't have a better week either, and in part they did beat San Jose. So they end up ahead of San Jose. But, you know, we'll see if Philadelphia at the very least stays competitive. And for Tortorella, it's it's really important to get wins out of these guys no matter what the status of the team is. And I admire him for that. I do. I admire that he's trying to squeeze out as many wins as he can. Now, in the end, could it end up hosing Philadelphia out of a really good draft pick? Yes. Would that make Flyers fans angry? Also, yes. But I, I understand what he's doing because he, he doesn't want to lose. Number 26, uh, dropping one spot from last week, the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, the Canucks, of course, one step forward, two steps back is just how this season's gone. Uh, JT Miller's season has gone from okay but poor defensively to an absolute unmitigated disaster. Uh, the one thing... With that, though, is that I think he's a lightning rod and everybody's focusing on him. When he's not the only problem, is he the bigger problem? Sure, yes. But for Vancouver, there's there's a lot of issues with this team. And, yeah, they're not making the playoffs. It's not going to happen. Um, and so they're, they're going to have to do something. And the funny part is that people talk about they should trade Miller. Right, yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I could do a video on that. I have no problem with that. Talking about contracts, it would be very difficult to trade. There's one in San Jose I can think of that there's rumors of, oh, Carlson's going to get traded. Where? What? What? No. So, because the cap's still a thing. If the cap wasn't a thing, sure, you could trade any contract. But for Vancouver, they're really in in, in, in a trouble now. And the ja January schedule is, uh, it's brutal. I do not expect Vancouver to get out of the bottom row in January. Uh, number 25, moving up two spots from last week, Arizona. The Coyotes are staying in this, and I, I'm, I'm not sure how far they go with this. I'm, I'm not sure if Arizona can actually dig their way back into the playoff hunt, but at least the games are good. At least they're playing well at home, and against Tampa, they put a scare into them for the first, first two-thirds of the third, first period, and then Tampa Bay got it going. But if you don't outwork Arizona, as Toronto found out this week, they can beat you. So for Arizona... Uh, they're playing with house money. There's no pressure on them whatsoever. And there's some guys who have definitely increased their value. Jacob Chikrin is going to be worth a mint at the deadline. Uh, he has played really well for the Coyotes and is a big part of the reason why they keep moving up the board. Uh, number 24, same spot as last week, the Ottawa Senators. Uh, the Senators, again, uh, they, they look good, they have good games, and then they lose. And then, you know, they'll, they'll have good moments in some other games, and then they just they end up with a loss. Uh, if they, they win a big game, the losses will follow. It's just, it's been rough. So while for Vancouver, it's been basically a disaster, for Ottawa, there are reasons to be encouraged, which makes it even more frustrating, I would think, for the Ottawa fans, because this isn't a team that's bad enough to be 24th overall, but the results tell you that that's where they're at. So uh, for Ottawa, I'm not sure how you fix this. They went out and got some guys in the offseason that have actually played really well. I, I guess you just keep going steadier as she goes, and, and maybe you make a change behind the bench, but I, I don't know that that's going to happen during the season. Number 23, and, and a bench boss who might be feeling the heat is John Hines in Nashville. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting was today when Nashville, when watching the Nashville-Vegas game, and I'm watching the Nashville feed, and you hear an announcer saying, well, the coach doesn't know what the problem is. Why guys aren't scoring goals the way that they're supposed to. Well, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to coach... I don't, I don't know what the problem is. So, now, whether that was just an off-the-cuff remark or not, it really caught my ear because that's kind of the coach's job is to figure out what's going wrong. So, uh, for Nashville, a team that's, you know, one game above NHL 500, but they're not winning very regularly. They've got, what, three wins in their last 11. Uh, it's It's been a tough go. So, we'll see if getting a point in Vegas helps spur something, but I've been waiting for the, them to really... Uh, get spurred on and get better, and it just hasn't happened. So Nashville finishes 2022 much lower than expected at 23rd. I would have expected them to be about in this range on the board at the start of the year. Just hasn't happened. Uh, number 22, dropping two spots from last week, the Detroit Red Wings. Now, Detroit has the comebacks. They have the victories. Detroit gets passed this week. Detroit's, they're fun to watch though, aren't they? Detroit is very fun to watch, and so... Detroit ends up moving down. I, I know it'll be, oh, he hates the Red Wings. He hates the Red Wings. This is why you know, he hates them. Uh, Detroit really is a team that 
you can't rely on these comeback victories and and yet here they are you know they get the comeback victory against ottawa but ottawa's down here and so yeah i'm gonna wait we're gonna wait and see if if detroit can can keep this up but yeah they end up a 22nd this week i know people aren't gonna be happy with that number 21 same spot as last week as florida florida does move up they don't move down uh florida really frustrating to watch florida this year uh they, they're just it's not the same team and if you want to point the finger at paul maurice uh, that that I think is fair. I think that's the that's one of the changes that was made. But also the personnel did change in the off season, and losing Huberto is a major difference. Now I'm not saying that getting Kachuk was bad because it's not, but the chemistry of the team has changed. So while Kachuk's having a really good year, the chemistry of the team is not the same. And so again, if you want to say that's on the coach, go for it. If you want to say that's on the players, that's also fair. But it's just, it's not the same team. Watching them this year compared to last year, it's there's no resemblance between the two other than the jerseys they're wearing. That's basically it. Uh, number 20, dropping one spot from last week, St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis, of course, uh, taking the loss tonight against Minnesota at home. And they're at NHL 500 right now. I do say NHL 500 because technically a 500 record is one win and one loss. Uh, in the NHL, not all losses are created equal. So it's wins and regulation losses. Keeping in mind that the wins include sh uh, overtime and shootout victories. So it's it's kind of a muddled picture. So NHL 500 is born. For St. Louis, that's where they're at. Um, I think they're, they're good enough that they won't end up back in the bottom row. I don't know that they're going to be able to get up into the top two rows this season. I don't know that's going to happen again. Uh, there's just, there's no consistency there. Uh, the defense gets blamed a lot. There are those two that blame the goaltender. And whatever your opinion of it is, um, I really think that there are various reasons for why St. Louis is where they're at. The interesting thing is, I don't think there's anybody right now that's looking at coaching as being any part of the problem. And I agree. Craig Berube, not in any kind of danger, even if the Blues miss the playoffs this year. Winning a Stanley Cup in 2019 does that. So, yeah, uh, the Blues, 20th. Uh, number 19, uh, and... Dropping four spots from last week is Seattle. Uh, Seattle has really kind of dropped out. And it's too bad because I think there's still players in Seattle that are playing well. I think Seattle has a decent roster there and there's some depth there. But what we've seen over the last few weeks is this team may not be ready to be a playoff team. And even though the Pacific is, you know, really known for its mediocrity at this stage, uh, Seattle's still losing big games, right? That game against Calgary was a big one. And they're just, they're finding ways to lose these big games. And I, I, I don't know what the answer is for Seattle, but they're now in the, the third row. They were first row, what, three weeks ago? Um, yeah, one, two, three, a month ago. But um, yeah, four weeks ago, they were, they were in the top row. So it was fun while it lasted. They do drop out. And so for Seattle, we'll see whether or not they're able to, to get it together. There's a decent team there. I just don't know if they're going to be able to put it together and, and, and make the playoffs. And I say that even though they are still within a point of a playoff spot right now, it's just they're trending in the wrong direction. Number 18, moving up four spots from last week, Calgary. Um, I think for Calgary, I think they're they're trending in the right direction. They're they're definitely right now looking like they, they could be one of the top three in the Pacific. I think that LA, Edmonton, and Calgary are going to have quite the dogfight for that second and third spot. Yes, there are teams in the East that would likely push them down that might miss the playoffs in the East. But at any rate, uh, Calgary, I think, is in is in decent shape. So uh, they move up four spots this week. The win over Vancouver tonight, cool. Uh, of course, they beat Seattle this week as well. Um, now, the fact they had a three-goal lead on Vancouver and then it's only a one-goal lead when they finish, uh, they still they played well enough to win that game. So uh, they end up at 18th this week. Number 17, moving up one spot from last week. The LA Kings. Uh, so the Kings do move up. They they don't move up as much as people might want. And that's quite the Pacific Division we got there, isn't it? Uh, let's see. We got San Jose, Anaheim, Vancouver, Seattle, Calgary, and, uh, and LA. So the bottom half of the board has six teams from the Pacific Division on it. And, uh, you know, I'm looking. I'm cheating on my cheat sheet here. Um, yeah. Uh, the Pacific Division, it's, it's, it's very wide open. And we can all have that discussion. I'm sure we'll have that discussion regularly about why. I did the video on goaltenders yesterday and, and accidentally discovered that goaltending may be part of the problem. And for LA, that is part of it too. Uh, where both Quick and Peterson have had 
real struggles keeping the puck on that. Copley's come in and been average, but it's made it look like Copley could very well be their starter. So for LA, if they can figure out the goaltending and start keeping the puck out of their net at a more reasonable rate, there's no reason they can't be second in the division. But that's the real question. Are they going to be able to get that done? Uh, number 16, dropping three spots from last week, Colorado. I, I did see a, a comment yesterday that was, you need to put Colorado 32nd on the board. No, I don't. Um, now, is Colorado having their struggles? Yes. Uh, do they belong 32nd? No. And they get McKinnon back tonight. It didn't have the desired result against Toronto. But I still think that for Colorado, they're going to get this going. They're, they're going to turn things around. The one thing is, the longer into the season it becomes, the tougher it can be to turn things around. So for Colorado, uh, they're 16th on the board. They're still in the top half. But there is some danger that Calgary could pass them, L.A. could pass them. And if Seattle has a good week, they could as well. Um, it's a busy month in January for most teams. So this board could change a lot between now and the end of January. But yeah, so Colorado ends up 16th. Uh, number 15, moving up one spot from last week, is Edmonton. Uh, so for the Oilers, they had the setback tonight against the Winnipeg Jets. I didn't penalize them for that. I thought they played well. That was just Hellebuck went in and stole one. So for Edmonton, the, win the point streak for, Mc for McDavid ended tonight. It stops at 17 games. Uh, so he'll just start a new one in the next game, and we'll act like we're surprised by it. But yeah, for the Oilers... There's no reason they shouldn't be a playoff team. They're only four games above 500 right now. Uh, but that's still better than they've been most of the season. And so, yeah, I, I think they're trending in the right direction. I don't read a whole lot into that setback against Winnipeg. And so they still end up keeping that 15th spot. They didn't move up or down based on that result today. Uh, number 14, moving up three spots from last week, Buffalo. Yeah, the Sabres are in the top half of the board. Now, the problem for the Sabres is they're in the East. This is the big problem. And you can't make an argument that a team based in New York, even if it's Western New York, belongs in the Western Conference. If they were in the Western Conference, we would be talking about Buffalo as a potential playoff team, right? But they're not. Now, the thing is, Buffalo's won eight of their last ten, and they've won six in a row. And they went in and they won in Boston. Now, it was in overtime, but still, they won in Boston. And Cousins stealing the puck off Bergeron. What? So, yeah, Buffalo is, I think they're legit. I don't know which team above the playoff line in the East they push out. But I, I do think that Buffalo could very well push their way in. It's not a matter of figuring out who's going to drop out. Just as long as Buffalo's winning 8 out of 10 games, they're going to force their way into that conversation. And they just look really good. Lukanen's been really good in net. So when Comrie's back and he got sent down today for a conditioning stint, I think Comrie ends up on the market. I, I don't I don't think you move on from Lucan, and I certainly don't think you move on from Anderson. They've both played really, really well. So, yeah, Buffalo's got some decisions to make if they want to stay in the hunt. I, I think Lucan and Anderson need to be the goaltenders. Um, moving on to number 13, dropping two spots from last week, New Jersey. This would have been worse for the Devils if not for the victory over Pittsburgh. The victory over Pittsburgh prevents them from being... I'll say 15th on the board if they'd lost that one against Pittsburgh because Buffalo would likely be ahead of them and Edmonton as well. Uh, that being said, for New Jersey, the win was a big one over Pittsburgh. We'll see if they can do it again tomorrow. They are at home against Carolina. So they're the team that could end that winning streak for Carolina. We'll see if that is, in fact, the case. Uh, but New Jersey, I thought, played well against Pittsburgh. If they can play that kind of game again, if they can get decent goaltending, there's no reason to think the New Jersey Devils won't look back at December as that month that was awful, and then things get better from there, right? Um, I had mentioned when I did the video on things going well for New Jersey that December would be a, uh, a big test and that they had some really big games coming up, and, and, and there, were, there were definitely some tests there. But, yeah, January can't be worse than that, right? Right? They have to be turning it around now. All right. That being said, moving on to number 12. Number 12 on the boards right here behind the microphone, so it was hidden. Moving up two spots from last week, the New York Islanders. Uh, the Islanders getting wins when they need them. Uh, the goaltending, of course, is stellar with Sorokin and net. I think you can make an argument for Sorokin to win the Vesna Trophy. Uh, I do think that Olmark would have a lot to say about that, but I think Sorokin's right there with him. And Sorokin was the one that last year probably did get a bit disrespected in Vesna voting. The interesting thing is the Vesna is voted on by general managers, so you can't blame that one on reporters. You can't blame the press for who wins the Vesna. You'd, you'd have to go to the general managers. Um, and, and then they'll fire you, and then you have to explain you don't actually work for the team. 
they'll fire you anyways. Uh, but yeah, the Islanders move up a couple of spots. They're in the hunt. And really, the East is an absolute dogfight, right? You've got all these teams right near one another. It, it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this works out in the second half of the season. Number 11, dropping one spot from last week, the New York Rangers. A uh, hot streak got broken for them. Uh, we'll see if they get another one started. Uh, and again, you've got the Rangers, the Islanders, the Devils, all right next to one another. So, yeah. Uh, the board is telling you uh, the Metro is really something to watch right now. And then again, when you look at the goalie board that I did yesterday, six out of ten or six out of eight teams in that division uh, with goaltending above the 900 mark, best in the National Hockey League, that these teams are all at over a 900 safe percentage. And the Rangers, uh, even though Shesterkin's numbers have dropped off, they're not bad. And Shesterkin could very well have a monster second half. So uh, don't count out the Rangers. I, I really think there's there's uh, some, some peril if you're going to count out the Rangers. Right now, they're technically below the playoff line, but everybody's got 44 points. And it's because they have less regulation wins. So that's how that works. Uh, just imagine if that's how it works at the end of the year, that a team misses the playoffs because they have less regulation wins. Um, might might make a fan base kind of angry. Uh, it also that also would lend itself to this play-in idea that people have that I don't think is going anywhere. Uh, number ten, dropping two spots from last week, the Jets. Uh, the Jets, it's been a bit of a, a tougher tougher go for them lately. Now they won tonight against Edmonton, big win there. Uh, however, that felt like it was a steal for Hellebuck. We'll see if they can build on that and get some momentum going. Uh, so for the Jets, the good news is they won enough games and they had enough points that they have a nice cushion for when they have this downbeat during the season, right? So I still think the Jets are a playoff team. I think they're still going to, I think they're going to stay in the mix for that, that division title into the second half of the season. And whether they get in or they don't as a division winner, uh, I think they're a playoff team and I think they're going to be dangerous in the playoffs too. This is a team that's deep. This is a team that's dealt with a lot of injuries and they've still managed to keep their head above water. If they tend to get healthier as the second half of the season goes along, and that's always an if, because you'll say you'll have the oh well this team's going to get healthier. Not necessarily. You get guys back, other guys get hurt. Some years it's like that. Ask Vegas. So yeah, Winnipeg number ten this week. We'll see if that's the lowest they get. Number nine, moving up three spots from last week is Washington. So for Washington, it's been quite the run. They went from twenty first to fifteenth to twelfth, and now they are ninth on the board. So they're almost top row. Very, very close, and if they keep playing the way they have been, they're going to be top row next week. Of course, uh, the, the win over Montreal, a team that's in free fall, you don't want to read too much into that, but the good news is this. Ovechkin's now past the Gordie Howe mark, and he seems more relaxed now. I think that was weighing on him a little bit, so he gets a hat trick today, and uh, the goal scoring, you know, if it's going to pick up for him, he's already on a 50-plus goal pace. That's just scary for the rest of the league. So uh, for Washington, who are going to get Wilson back, they're going to get Backstrom back. They could be a very scary team again come second half of the season. And uh, yeah, so rumors of their demise were greatly exaggerated. Uh, number eight, dropping four spots from last week, Pittsburgh. Now, there will probably be calls that Pittsburgh should be lower because that's the way this works. When I have Pittsburgh higher up on the board, people who don't like Pittsburgh or people who think that Pittsburgh's too high will speak up. When Pittsburgh drops, and when they're in this area of the board, or even down in here, Pittsburgh fans will pipe up and go, no, we belong higher. And that's how it works. Pittsburgh seems to be the team that generates the most discussion. I'll put it that way in the comment section. Um, but for Pittsburgh, I have them at eight this week. They dropped four spots. So if they have another week like this one, they could be as low as 12th. But look at this. Uh, Metro, 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 Metro. Eight, nine, 11, 12, 13. All Metro division teams. So... Again, absolutely ridiculous just how good the Metro division is, and we haven't even got to the best team in the Metro yet. So, yeah, Pittsburgh, uh, we'll see how their week goes this week. But it was a rough one for them that they just had. They'll be looking for a better week to start 2023. Number seven, same spot as last week, Minnesota. Uh, so the Minnesota Wild have had a really good run going on. And, again, they're, they're one of the teams, too, that I've seen people commenting they're too high. Nope. Um, I, I really honestly feel that Minnesota at seventh is the right spot for them. Uh, they go in, they beat St. Louis today. In the end, they kind of made it look somewhat easy, uh, but I think that was the hard work. And now Hartman's starting to round into form. So uh, Ryan Reeves has fit right in with that fourth line. It has changed the complexion of that team in a positive manner. Uh, and that's the thing with Reeves. When he's deployed by a team where he fits, it helps. 
when he's deployed by a team where it doesn't quite fit, it can be a real detriment. But right now, Minnesota, everything's firing in all cylinders. And Marc-Andre Fleury's numbers have turned around too. 29 saves today on 31 shots. That's a pretty good night. So yeah, Minnesota ends up seventh. Number six, uh, moving up three spots from last week, a team that does move up and move down regularly, and that's the Dallas Stars. Now for Dallas, um, another good game for them against San Jose. Obviously, San Jose's down here, but they had a good week. Dallas had a good week. Uh, they move up back into the top row for the first time in a while. Uh, they were number nine last week, number nine the week before. The week before that, they were number seven. The week prior to that, they were number five. So this is the highest they've been in about a month's time. And so we'll see if they stay there. Uh, Robertson gets a goal tonight. He does He does seem to have things going while he's on. I think it's an eight-game point streak right now for Robertson. It's seven or eight-game point streak. Uh, but now he's got two goals over that streak. Uh, so the goal scoring may be coming back. And the good news is he's still generating opportunities, right? And so Johnston's been really good. Ottinger's been solid. Their defense has been quite good. Dallas looks good. Kind of scares me how good Dallas has looked right now uh, because as a Stars fan, I'm just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop, which is terrible, horrible, awful. Number five, moving up one spot from last week is Vegas. Vegas has a problem, though. Vegas has got their home game in order. They've started winning games at home. Their home record's getting better. Now it's the road where they're starting to have trouble. So Vegas is, I mean, they're not home and cold at the top of the division, but they really kind of sort of are. Um... The debate about whether or not they're the best team in the West is going to be out there, I would think, until the playoffs. There's going to be debate about whether or not they have a good record because of their division. There, there's some truth to that. There's also some numbers that might point the other direction. Um, I have done videos where I've talked about you know Pacific Division teams and their records against the other conference, and they're not as bad as one might think. Uh, but yeah, for Vegas, they're number five on the board. We'll see for how long. Uh, Dallas, Minnesota... And I would say Washington might be good bets for the next team to end up fifth on this board if Vegas does drop. Washington could make a big jump next week, depending on how they do. Uh, number four on the board, uh, dropping two spots from last week, is Toronto. Uh, for Toronto, it really is. It's it's that consistency game to game. And just, I felt like this week there are three teams that belong ahead of them. It is not an insult to Toronto to have them at fourth. They're still one of the better teams in the league. The win over Colorado was a fantastic bounce back after a rough night against the Arizona Coyotes where they allowed a season-high six goals. This is a team that, despite injuries on the blue line, has been quite good. And so, yeah, uh, we'll see whether or not Toronto uh, has a really good week coming up and ends up forcing their way further up the board. But I felt like fourth was the right spot for them. So the, the win over Colorado did not bump them up past the three teams ahead of them on this board. Number three, moving up two spots from last week, is Tampa. Tampa's another one that I get told I have too high on the board. They're not playing that well, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but they are. They are playing well. Uh, tonight they get down 2-0 against Arizona, a team that makes you work for it. And so they work for it. They score five of the next six, and they win the game 5-3. to three. Vasilevsky's playing really well. I got into the numbers on the advanced stats yesterday. Both Vasilevsky and Elliott are giving them very good goaltending. And so, yeah, Tampa Bay is a team that I don't see a lot of weaknesses there. And that's despite them losing McDonough for cap reasons in the offseason. Because you have to stay under the cap. Yes, they do. You, nope, they do. That was only that one time. Uh, so for Tampa Bay, they move back into the top three. I do expect people to say they're too high. But that, that happens. Uh, so, yeah, Tampa Bay after a drop because uh, they've been fourth, second, and then fifth last week, another back up to third. So they've been all over. The only number they haven't been this season, I don't think they've been first. So third spot for Tampa Bay. Number two, dropping one spot from last week, is Boston. And really it comes down to, uh, there's two factors in this. One, the loss at home against Buffalo. And just minor little quibbles. And when you're looking at the difference between team number one and team number two, there are very minor differences. Boston's still playing really well. I thought Buffalo went in and stole one today. It was a great game for the Sabres. I thought Boston fought back in that one nicely, and then Buffalo fought back. It was just such a fun game. Uh, I didn't even get mad at the result. I didn't get mad at all when Buffalo scored in overtime. I didn't get mad that they stole the puck off of Bergeron to get it done. I, I thought it was a great result overall for Buffalo. And I, again, Boston just drops one spot. Why? There's a team in the league that has had points in 16 straight games, and they're number one. Carolina's number one on the board uh, for the first time in a while. Now, I, I don't know whether... I don't think they've been number one on the board this season. 
I don't think they've been number one on the board this season, and I don't know if they've been as high as number two. They started the season at third, third, fourth, fourth, and then they're up to third, down to fifth, stayed fifth. Then they dropped off to 11th, and they had a tough time there for a while with winning games in overtime. Uh, then they were ninth, eighth, seventh. Last week they were third. And this week they're first. Um, and I know there's people, too, that wanted them to be higher on the board sooner, but that's not really how the board works. Uh, the, the way that I, I, I put this board together and the way that I decide on who moves up and moves down from day to day, and it is a day-to-day -day thing, uh, it is not meant to have these dramatic shifts one way or the other. As long as a team is playing really well, uh, they will move up. And if a team's not playing well, they will move down. Uh, it's just, it's not like a really quick process. But Carolina, I believe, has earned that spot at number one. We'll see if they stay there next week or not. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I hope you had a wonderful 2022, and I hope you have a fantastic 2023. Thanks again for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.